We blend it with some spices, okay. which I can't tell you because if I, can, if I tell you, I'll have to kill you. Secret. Maria Elena Lorenzo has been making tamales and other dishes from her native Costa Chica in Mexico in the Watts neighborhood for 30 years now, selling on the street with a cart at the beginning before working up to buy a food truck. Earlier this year, the family collected enough money to open a storefront in Bell Gardens, which Lorenzo runs with the help of her daughters. With their new brick-and-mortar location, the family can continue to highlight the food of their heritage, Afro-Mexican cuisine from the state of Guerrero, next to Oaxaca in southern Mexico. When I visited, Maria Elena and her daughters were working on a deep, rich mole costeño, or red mole, and a lighter, more acidic mole verde, or green mole. The green mole, this is not my mom's recipe. This, is, this will be my grandmother's recipe. So this is how um, our grandmother taught her how to make it, and then she taught us how to make it. Can you tell us a, a little bit about the, the part of Mexico where your family's from? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we are from the state of Guerrero. We was born in Acapulco, mm. but my mom, she is from uh, Costa Chica. Okay. That's where the ships used to travel with slaves from Africa mm. that they used to come to the United States. And so some of them say that some of them slaves will like jump into the ocean, okay. you know, to try to get away from slavery. And so that's how this race came to be. Whenever somebody over here will ask me, like, where are you from? They want to hear anywhere else but Mexico. Mm. You know, like, they want to hear that I'm from Hawaii or Cuba or some other island. Uh, no, I'm Mexican. Because mm. Mexico also has a big, you know, community of black people over there. I'm, Maria, I, yeah? I, I, I'm also curious, you know, have you ever felt discriminated against or that you're treated differently because yes. of your background? Yeah, definitely. I was in middle school when I started noticing the difference. It's where they started bringing it up. That's when I started realizing that I was different. They're like, why? Why do you look like that? You're not Mexican. I'm like, yeah, I'm Mexican. And that's when, you know, my parents started explaining to us where we're from, but we are Mexican. So Judah. Yes. Let's say someone has never had mole before in their whole life. Mm -hmm. How would you describe that? It's, it's divine. It's like, you know, the red mole, like you said, you taste the sweetness first and then the spicy comes last. And either you're using chicken, pork with it. Okay. You know, the meat is also very essential. It's like you use pork, it gives it a whole other different flavor too. How did you learn how to make the mole? I first started learning with my grandmother. When she passed away, my mom came in, you know, and taught us all these other different techniques. What's the first step? For the moles, we, um, we you get the chilies together and we're gonna toast those. We're gonna leave them there for a minute so they can release their oils. Are they all spicy or are some more spicy than others? Uh, Guajillo and Costeño, they have a medium spice okay. and then the, the arbol is the most spicy one. It's the spicy Yes. You wanna get it toast but not burn. I'm gonna soak this babies. So we've got the the peppers are soaking, we've had the, the chocolate, the cinnamon, the cookies, and then are those it's plantain. Plantains? Ripe ripe plantain. The spices. And then the spices, okay. Cumin, black pepper and clove. We use the garlic and onion and the setup is ready. Right now I'm gonna put um, a whole chicken to cook so I can use the chicken stock to blend it in. Mm. Me, me interesa conocer la, la, la historia de, de su empresa. Quiero ir todo. De, al principio. Desde el principio, oh my God. Ah, me preguntó. Me preguntó que cómo se conoció a usted y papá. Trabajábamos los dos en la cocina. ¿Cómo aprendió usted a co cocinar? Mi abuelita. Y mi mamá. Sí. ¿Y cómo empezó su, su restaurante, su, su empresa? Yo empecé en un carrito de marqueta. Oh, wow. Con los tamales. Y ya de ahí, como a los, qué sé yo, a los 10 años, ya saqué mi lonchera. ¿En este momento tiene el restaurante y también la sí, lonchera? Sí, claro. Okay. Así es. Lo 
con la bendición de Dios adelante. ¿Y eso se come, se come solo o con tortillas o con carne? Con o tortilla, qué? nosotros en Guerrero lo acostumbramos con arroz blanco mm. y tortillas recién hechas. ¿Sí? Perfecto. ¿Sí? <risa> Picosito. Claro, claro. Para el mole verde. Ya está todo asado, la cebolla, el ajo, las semillas. Y el tomatillo y el chile se va crudo. So what's it like having a, a restaurant with, with your family, with your sisters? So this is like, this is just like being home. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, right. Lisa's and Heidi is the ones in charge of taking front of the house. In the front. And <laughs> Judith is the one taking prep for the guisados and everything else. And I'm the one in charge for the back area, the tamales. Tamales. which I already pre-boiled over there. And I already have the chicken already shredded, we boiled it. And you were saying, how, many, how much masa can you go through in a day? In a day, 150 pounds. You said four hours, 150 pounds? I, yes, 150 pounds in four hours. Okay, so you have to cook um, the, roast the seeds? Fry the seeds. You fry the seeds? And then from there, we, I never measure. I feel like that's the sign of a, of a, real, a real cook. You don't, have yes. to, you don't have to measure. <laughs> and we just wait that to get nice and crispy. And that's just blended jalapenos. Blended jalapenos. And this is the, the sesame seeds, the garlic, the pumpkin seeds. Do you remember the first time you ever ate a tamale? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I used to eat them every single day because my mom always uh, used to drop us off to school. Uh -huh. She had to walk through the streets and we used to go with her selling the tamales. Meanwhile, we arrived to school, so, so that was our breakfast. sell tamales on the way to school? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that was our breakfast. I mean, that's pretty day. smart. So this is the masa. This is, we already get it pre-made for okay. us, you know? with our own recipe. The, the form of the tamale, you can know who made it. Really? Yes. I'm like, so this it's is like not, a, yeah. it's like a fingerprint. Yes. Everyone does it differently. Yes. Everybody does tamales have their favorite spoon. Their favorite spoon. This is mine. And that's your spoon. This is my spoon. Tom, why, why, is, why do you like that spoon? This spoon, <laughs> I like it because it's just the right portion and uh, the weight. I know how much, just because of the weight of the spoon, and when I add everything else, I know each of them portion. Each of them have a, a spoon. My other sister, Nayeli, just left. She used to carry hers in her purse. <laughs> and she used to finish and wash them and wrap them in paper and put them in her purse. Her, she carried around her tamale spoon? Yes. yes. Wow. Because they, each of them, you know, they said they can't make tamales with no other spoon, so whatever. So I go ahead and grab this. I use my hand as leverage. Well, now I see how you get through 150 pounds in four hours. You do it so fast. Right. Two. And then, oh, and then also, and so then from here, they, they get steamed? They get steamed. Okay. Yeah. Huh. 
Holidays in Mexico are about family and togetherness, and so it only seemed fitting that we ended our visit by making tamales, which are a staple for many Latinos during the Christmas season. The restaurant Tamales Elena is about family and togetherness as well. Recipes being passed down from generation to generation, and sisters working together day after day to care for their family and keep tradition alive. I wasn't very good at making tamales, but that wasn't really the point. I was just appreciative. Appreciative of how welcoming Maria Elena and her family were, and how willing they were to share their food and traditions with me. I just, I just want to say thank you so much. It was so nice to get to know you. Quiero decir gracias por todo. Fue un placer conocerles. Gracias por, por compartir su historia, su conocimiento. Gracias por todo.